So I'm back with Tony, and we are kind of uniting on the heart of a parent, somebody who had been diagnosed with PNES and whose kids have to do the whole journey with you. And it's not easy. It is really, really hard. Um, I don't know. I, I know that everyone's walk is, is unique, and it's important. So let's just talk back and forth just what – what you've noticed with yours, and I can share a little bit of what I noticed with mine. What would you say right now is something um, that really stands out? I mean, my kids are fairly young. My son is almost three, and my daughter is almost eight. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to say right now, I don't think that my son understands. I don't think it impacts him to the same degree as it impacts my daughter. Yes. Um, he will run around still. He doesn't stop and like wonder what's wrong with mama. He just keeps going. Um, so I, I don't want to minimize the effect on him, but I don't think for him it's a thing that I need to worry about. I don't think he, like, a, like the first time when the EMTs were called to my house, he was still running around the living room. And, and I'm sitting up. I couldn't see him. I was shaking, but he didn't sound affected. Mm -hmm. um, now, my daughter, on the other hand, she is, she's been affected. Um, she's already an anxious child. So I have that to deal with. But recently we've been um, talking and I'm learning that she has a higher level of empathy as well. Mm. Um, and so coupling that with her anxiety, I know the first time she saw me had one um, was when the EMTs were called and she wouldn't come near me. Um, she stayed away. Um, my mom actually had come to the house to kind of help because we were trying to get her out, the, out my daughter out of the door for school. So um, she, yeah, she wouldn't talk to me. She wouldn't. So I knew she was affected. Um, she hasn't seen too many since then because I try to keep myself kind of isolated when they're happening. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I don't think I realized the impact it was having on my children or the rest of my family um, until I actually saw a video. They recorded me once um, because we still weren't getting any answers. This was before I knew I had PNES. Yeah. And I was still shaking and the neurologist said, it's not epilepsy. And I said, well, look, this is still happening. And when I saw that video, I realized how scary it must be to be the person there helping, you know, trying to figure out how do I help? What do I do? Can I do anything? Should I call? Um, so I'm still, you know, I know it looks scary. I know I can't imagine like what goes through my husband's head or my daughter's head. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm having a seizure, I dissociate and I'm extremely calm. Mm -hmm. So I think kind of understanding the impact that it has on them has been really one of my main focus and making sure I keep myself isolated just to protect my daughter. Right. She knows what they look like. Um, when I started going through all of the testing, I came home with, you know, all of the nodes on your head with my monitor um, and told her, mom, it's okay, mommy's okay. They're just trying to find out why mommy shakes. And my, my son thought I was a robot. So, <laughs> say, what's your smart aleck your response to that? <laughs> he was like, you're, you're a little you're snarky. A <laughs> um, he was upset actually when I came home and didn't have mom. So, and I had to do an overnight stay in the hospital and I explained to my daughter, you know, there's nothing wrong with mommy. They're trying to figure out why mommy's shaking. Mommy is okay. Mm -hmm. because wise, I am okay. Um, everything else checks out. You know, I've done the blood work. I've done heart stuff. Everything else is fine. So um, breaking it down to a level she can understand. Yes. Is extremely important to me. Um, making sure to reassure her that I am okay. And then after I got diagnosed, telling her, okay. This is why mm -hmm. um, stress. Do you know what stress is? And we talk about, and then we need to make some lifestyle changes. Do you know what that means? So ever since then, you know, it's been 
kind of a, this is why mommy does what mommy's doing. And how can we kind of as a family, as a unit, keep going? Because it's not just my lifestyle that should change, you know? Like, if I'm always living in an elevated stress level, I've passed that on. I know I've passed that on. I know that that's why she has anxiety. So how can we be more mindful as a family? How can we be more intentional? How can we practice being calm? Um, so, yeah. So do you actually practice? Do you have things that you do together as a family to practice? My daughter loves yoga. Um, I haven't done it recently because I'm not active physically very well. Um, but she, we do a lot of breathing together, a lot of different breathing exercises. And it was so, a couple nights ago, her and her brother were laying in bed with me and her brother just wouldn't calm down. And not because he was upset about, just because he's a toddler and it's bedtime. Mm -hmm. But she said, okay, we're going to do this breathing exercise. Oh, I love it. Breath in and breathe out. And she would, she had her hand on his stomach. Okay, take another deep breath in. And now I'm going to tell you. And she guided him through like a guided breathing. And I was like, okay. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's really wild. Yeah, my kids, um, they were very much there. The first seizure, they were actually the only ones there, which was really scary for them. And the police came and... Um, the ambulance and my parents, we were able to get in touch with them. They came to get the kids before the ambulance took me away. And so we've had to deal a lot with, with the fears of what that first impact made on them, not just the seizure itself, but whatever was going on and their, you know, whatever narrative they were telling themselves about what happened, where it was going, if I would come back. And, you know, I mean, it, that's, six years ago and it still sometimes comes up. It still sometimes surfaces. Mm -hmm. And, but the things that I love, we did the same type of things. And oh my goodness, as a parent, you want to protect your kids from everything. Even the things that are just going on into your, in your mind, you know, you want to protect them from the things that you're stressing over the things that you're worrying over the things that you have not dealt with or repressed or personality things so you're like I know this isn't right mm -hmm. I don't really know what to do about it so I'm just gonna bury it for now well PNAS you know erupts everything mm -hmm. and it's all sitting on a mess on the on the kitchen table and you're like okay um I have to sort this out but I, I gotta do it in front of you or at least for me I felt that it was really important since they were a part of the journey to let them continue to be a part of the journey in healthy ways and letting them see like, okay, so I didn't do so well, you know, but when I felt sad, mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel my sadness. I wouldn't allow myself to cry. I wouldn't allow myself to even acknowledge the cause of, of the tears that wanted to come out. I just, okay, we're not doing that. We're going to go do something else. And they saw that, you know, they learned to see when I would start to get upset and it was almost like I swallowed the tears. I swallowed that emotion back down until, you know, it erupted. But now on the flip side of it, I'm really grateful for this because I, I don't think a lot of parents understand the importance of emotional regularity and the importance of helping a child go from, you know, just like a plateau to a heightened state and teaching them how to get back down, you know, to, to the, their previous you know, state. It's really important to be able to learn how to do that, that it's okay to go up here knowing that you're going to go back down here and continue on. So for me, one of my favorite activities to do with the kids uh, is blowing bubbles because mm -hmm. that's again the breathing. So I mean, and I couldn't believe how much joy I got from blowing bubbles. It was outstanding. I just sat outside for ten minutes with my niece and my son uh, on his birthday last year, and we were just blowing bubbles. We were making you know competitions to see how big the bubbles could get, and it was just so much fun. And I know how good it was for me and for them. So I like you. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying seeing 
them take what they've learned through this journey, applying it to themselves, and even kind of giving me that look like, uh, mom, <laughs> you know, when I'm getting out of, out of sync, and it's obvious that I, I'm overwhelmed and not taking life on life's terms and just breathing through, just knowing that this moment will pass too. So it's, it's really, um, it's a shared journey. It's definitely a shared journey. Yeah, another thing that I've learned um, is important is, so the causes of my PNES are very much tied to my childhood and my relationship um, with my father mm -hmm. and my relationship with my siblings. And, you know, not wanting to repeat that for my children, but also trying to let them have relationship with their pack uh, my father and my brother and sister, their aunt and uncle. Um, so I've had to be, like you said, I have to sort of do some of it out in front of them. I can't protect them from all of it. I can't keep them, you know, they don't know everything. Um, right. But if I start to, for example, probably six, seven months ago, my sister and I just stopped speaking. Mm -hmm. And my daughter wanted to know why can't we go and see her? Why can't we see you know, why can't I play with my cousins? And I had to tell her, you know, this has nothing to do with you. This is what's going on. I'm working through it. As soon as we get through this, you know, you'll be able to see your cousins again. This isn't the end of the relationship by any means. But I, you know, have started to put up more boundaries um, that I need. Sorry, there's a noise. <laughs> I've, I, you know, I need to put up boundaries for myself yeah. to make sure I'm keeping myself safe. Yes. Uh, mentally and emotionally, because a lot of it is rooted in my childhood. So mm -hmm. you're right. Some of it you have to do out in front of your kids um, so they can see. They need to see, you know, okay, for me, it looks like mommy's broken. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't help that that's some of the mental story that I'm telling myself is mommy's broken. So you see the breaking point, but you also need, they also need to see the healing and yeah. they need to be a part of the healing. Uh, not all of it by any means, because we don't, you know, I don't need my daughter to know everything that happened right. in my childhood. Yeah. Um, because I am a firm believer in like letting her have her separate relationships. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't want what happened to me to happen to her. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a balancing act for sure. But it's also, you know, yeah, you mo you saw mommy do that. But this is how mommy is trying to get better from that. Yes. So I'm glad that you mentioned boundaries because that's something with my story too. I, I didn't learn boundaries growing up. I, I learned that um, whatever boundaries you had, uh, are insignificant. That's the message that I, I learned growing up that boundaries are, they don't keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And I grew up out, out of that mentality, wrong thinking, completely wrong thinking. So my kids for the first part of their life, uh, so my daughter, I think my son was five and my daughter was seven at the time. Mm -hmm. They're 13 and 11 now. So at the time, they saw me living haphazardly, you know, with boundaries, with relationships, just, just a mess of emotion, just people doing whatever they want. No, absolutely no. This is what it's like to be me and to act like myself. And I get to be me no matter where I go. And if you want to be in my life and in my circle, these are the restrictions, um, how I need you to engage with me. And not, you know, I mean, we're not control freaks, but <laughs> there are certain things that I'm not going to allow in my home. Mm -hmm. And same thing, if, if we have relationships, there are certain things that I won't allow in my relationships. And that is not something that I had in the past. That is something that I'm so, so thankful. Even I could say this now, I'm so thankful for PNES because of that. Mm -hmm. It is so important that kids grow up knowing what boundaries are, knowing that if people... Uh, that nobody can bypass your boundaries mm -hmm. and they don't, it doesn't have to be consequence free. You do have a right to say, no, I don't want you in my life. Mm 
-hmm. or no, that's not okay. And I'm going to make sure that stops. This is some, one of the things that I'm really grateful for PMES. Yeah. It's funny that you say grateful because it, it, it is, you have to, it's almost like learning how to, I don't want to say live because for me it hasn't been that drastic, mm -hmm. um, but it's, I have to relearn a lot of things. Like for me, it's, I've, I really need to learn how to take care of my physical health. Um, because that was never, I kind of just, I've always been in perfect health, so let's just keep on going. But no. <laughs> yeah, age does nothing. We're fine. We're going to live like this forever. <laughs> right. But your body is done. Like, my body's done. I have fried it at both ends. And no matter how much mentally I want to keep going, I, you know, I, I just can't now. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of relearning, and I don't think – that it's bad. I think that I probably needed all of these healthy, healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. healthy limits to what I can and can't take on. Mm -hmm. So for that, yeah, I can say thanks, PNES, but not for a whole, <laughs> not a whole lot else. It's hard. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to Pollyanna it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, yay, this is so much. It's so great. I mean, the, the things that have come out of my life and that are still coming out because that's what I've learned is that, you know, I don't have seizures. I haven't had seizures for over four years, but guess what? The journey's not over. I mean, just this week, something really painful came up from the past. And I mean, I didn't have a seizure from it, but I'm looking at it and saying, wow, this is pretty mammoth. This is really big and I have to face it. And I'm so thankful. Um, but I, I know that I have to face it. If I want to live free, I have to face it. And because of the journey that I've taken, I have a great support system. I have so many people who are very skilled in what they do, who know about trauma and things in the past. And, um, and they're just more than equipped and am, you know, amply equipped to help me. They'll willing to stop and say, okay, let's, you know, let's go through this. I, I work with a prayer model. And so praying through it for me is just, it's been so tremendous. The healing that has taken place has been so tremendous. So the journey does not end when the seizures end. It's a totally different lifestyle. It's facing things head on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because you're hot, you know, I think a lot, and I don't want to speak for everyone that has PNES, but I think a lot of it is we just were taught and we learned and it was reinforced, like, this is how you deal with it behind the closed door. You just swallow it, keep going. Well, guess what? PNES stops that in its tracks. And then, like you said, for the rest of your life, you have to, as soon as it happens, acknowledge it. You have to take it in and you have to be willing to address what happens. Otherwise you're going to start the cycle all over again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm not going back. <laughs> I just, uh, there's no chance of that. I love my body for doing what it did to stop me in my tracks. I love how that happened um, because yeah. I'm really loving who I'm becoming out of this, mm -hmm. but I don't get me wrong. I did not enjoy that. That, uh, that season of my life was very painful. I mean, you, you do, you lose so much, 90% of the things that were in my life just vanished almost overnight. And then the journey just, it worsened um, as it was getting better. So that's a total paradox, but it's true. It was getting better, but the circumstances looked pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'm so glad that we got to talk again. And, and really my the purpose of, of this uh, conversation is to let people know that there is hope. There is so much encouragement that, that even PNES can offer to our children. If you are a child and you're watching, one of the things that is really on my heart right now is to let, let people know. It was really important for me to let my children know it was not your fault. It's not your fault. You couldn't have done anything to stop it. You couldn't, you didn't make it start. 
it has nothing to do with you. This is an outside thing. And just want you to feel safe. So I hope if you're watching and you need that message that you will receive that message.